Yeah, you know what time it is. Crack open that bottle of wine. Grab your favorite glass. Pour a couple of fingers of scotch in it. Get that stick. Light it. And blow. It's time to hang. With steel, sharpened steel. After dark. Hello, Sharpies, and welcome to this week's edition of Steel Sharp and Steel. It's an after dark episode, y'all. We got a lot going on. So as every week, we're going to kick off the show with a message from our sponsor. And our sponsor this week is Ironic Karmic Poetic Justice. When you spend your entire career vilifying black folks and women for an endless stream of perceived failings and faults only to fall prey to drug addiction and multiple divorces before dying in Black History Month, you've got ironic, karmic, poetic justice. (laughs) We are, of course, talking about everybody's favorite bloviated, uh, Oxycontin addicted, bringing himself to deafness, windbag. Mr. Rush Limbaugh. I know mm-hmm. some people say that you shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but uh, that's some foolishness. Um, he spent three hours a day, five days a week, speaking ill of dead, living legends, mm-hmm. all sorts of people. He spared no one. And as a journalism major who uh, br- uh, graduated with a degree in broadcasting, I will tell you right now, I am not one of those people who says, well, you've got to give him credit for uh, being a broadcaster. That's like saying, well, you've got to give Jeffrey Dahmer credit for being a chef. No, I don't. That man was eating people. And Rush Limbaugh was- But was he seasoning them though? He was. I think he was. There had to be raisins in some of those uh, (laughs) body salads he was doing. Um, So Rush Limbaugh (laughs) spent his entire career appealing to the most base, ignorant instincts of his Mm -hmm. audience and becoming fabulously wealthy for it. $40 million a year. Howard Stern, at least, had the intellectual honesty of really being humorous. He was ribald. Mm -hmm. Um, He said sexist things, especially at the beginning of his career. But that was clearly a character Mm -hmm. that he was putting on. Rush Limbaugh was this person. He was a despicable person. Mm-hmm. And he is dead. We're going to get that, uh, get back to that a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so we are going to press on. I just wanted to say ironic, karmic, poetic justice. The ancestor said, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> and he sucked his last cigar, and now his ashes are burning in hell. Hmm. He's so silly. <laughs> So because we have so many things tonight that are, shall we say, um, um, a little bit left of morally proper, this is why this is an after dark issue. It is. And an you know, one of the other things is like, you know, when I found out we were doing after dark, I'm like, this is as close to a club as I'm going to get for a while. So, you know, I got my drink, got my little club out there, on, got the girls up front, you know, since there's only one female on the show today, I figured, you know, they would co-host with me. So, you know, one time for the booty. Hey! <laughs> no, okay, for real, like just a little behind the scenes. When I sat down in my chair, this is what I got from my two co-hosts. Hey, Joy. I categorically deny the allegation. <laughs> I, 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 on the other hand, am not going to call my co-host a lie. <laughs> what, what I'm going to say is that I appreciate the love offering. <laughs> that's what i will say it's and it's all love you know like i you know when you're sitting around and um i do corporate stuff all day and so you know of course you got the button up you got the 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 blazers the very professional conservative look um and then if i'm not doing that then i'm laying around in my sweatpants and my sweatshirt bundled up in my blanket etc really 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 mark <laughs> <laughs> 
One, two, three, four. Beep. 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 That's an excellent segue, Joy. Why don't you take it there? You know what? That is the next thing that we're going to talk about. So we have a spotlight today and our spotlight is supposed to be about um, someone that we think is deserving of special recognition for something good. And today's spotlight is going to be my fa- one of my favorite comedians, Dave Chappelle. He's now, gathering me- all them dollars. Look at him. All the dollars. Let me explain this video to you. So for those of you that don't know, after uh, when Dave first signed the Chappelle Show agreement with Comedy Central, he was, you know, he was young. He was excited. He was probably baked out of his mind. And um, they did it rapidly. You know, I remember his co-writer, uh, Neil, talking about he called him on a Friday like, yo, somebody call you about a show on Sunday. Just said yes. So wasn't a lot of thought put into it. And they agreed to something that ended up being like an iconic show. Mm-hmm. But now we discovered that the deal was kind of trash. They owned his name. Mm-hmm. He couldn't ever have another Chappelle show because they owned his name. And he went to uh, it went out on uh, there was a deal between um, Comedy Central's parent network and Netflix to put the show on Netflix. And he went to the public. Hey. Don't watch this show because they're doing me real dirty. I'm not getting any money. They basically stole my everything. So, you know, just don't watch it. And to Netflix's credit, they took it down. They're like, you know what? This isn't right. And it really, when we talk about being an ally, whether it's about racism or about just doing the right thing, Netflix was like, you know what? That's kind of messed up. We didn't know all of that. So we'll take it down. Yeah, we're cool with that. They didn't worry about the money they were going to lose, about the bottom line. They thought about what was morally just. And so after all this time, and if you watch his, um, he has an Instagram post that's about 20 minutes long called uh, Redemption Song, which is where I got this clip from. But if you watch it, he says it is finally his chance to say, thank you for doing, it was a pleasure doing business with you, Comedy Central, because he couldn't say that before. And I think this is also a great example of um, not giving up, knowing your worth. I coach people on that all the time. Y'all ain't going to just do me like this. And even if he hadn't won, he let it be known. So even if he failed at getting his money, he let other people know, watch your dollars. Don't trust the 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 the, the suits and own your brand. Exactly. So hats off. So salute. After dark salute. That's to right. Boy Dave. I'm rich, biatch. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw that. Um, it came it came across my timeline kind of suddenly. It was it was mm-hmm. a surprise because I remember when he made the statement, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's really it's not all altruistic on Netflix. Let's be clear. Netflix signed a nine figure deal with him. They were paying him lots of money, and they got their two big specials. And then, as a consequence, he has posted all of his other little things um, under the Netflix banner. And so they knew that this was a hot property, but they also realized that if wasn't nobody watching it, then they weren't going to realize the money that they had invested in Viacom. And so somebody bent. Yeah. Somebody bent. And I, I don't think it was Netflix that paid uh, Dave. Dave no. seems to imply that CBS Viacom paid him. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that is a great right. turn of events because I love the show. As soon as it came on Netflix, I started watching. And then he came out and said, don't watch y'all. And I was like, oh, damn, damn, damn. And I stopped watching immediately and then it was gone. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And then it came back and I watched all of his, anytime he put something out when he did that amazing eight minutes and 46 seconds thing Mm -hmm. about George Floyd and he's doing these outdoor venues and uh, all these other things. It is interesting. Paul said, read the damn contract. That is true. But it is also true that um, both the record industry and the entertainment industry is shady as hell. Mm-hmm. And he was the artist that created that content. He was the artist that created, the, he and Neil, his, mm-hmm. his partner, created all those iconic characters that have been making money for Comedy Central. I only wish that they had shot the show in HD because looking at it in a square is in all them pixels and stuff. It's real fuzzy. <laughs> but it is an excellent show. It's an iconic show. I love mm-hmm. it. I'm very glad that uh, Dave got his money. Uh, and, you know, and, I just want oh, to touch on this again. You know, Carla makes a good point. You know, I wouldn't know what I was reading 
And um, that's another important thing. Like you can read a contract, but if you don't comprehend it, you're still signing it blind. I mean, right. how many of us have actually gone through every line of our contract on our mortgage, on our car loan, anything? You can have nice. all kinds of nonsense in there and not know it. Um, South Park did a great episode about this. <laughs> Blouses. <laughs> but um, South Park did a great episode about that. Um you know, y'all, y'all, uh, I'm loving my chat room because I'm watching them like, you know. Fire comment CBS is shady. <laughs> I love y'all. But um, I forgot what I was saying. So I'm going to just move on. <laughs> well, we, we were talking about how talks broke down with Dave mm-hmm. Chappelle and Viacom. And speaking of people whose talks have broken down, we have Mr. Turtle <laughs> and uh, abused now minority leader of the Senate, uh, Mitch McConnell, who after being shaded by, well, I guess for, for Trump, it was shade. It was a 600 uh, word press release on whatever platform he still mm-hmm. has that, that he is able to release things on, I guess, parlor or, or That's just tele- telegram. Um, one of those, uh, Flintstones birds that taps on a tablet and then mm-hmm. carries it somewhere. But he did this whole thing. Oh, sad and tired and such and such Mitch McConnell and blah, 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 and blue, blah, blue. And a lot of people, would have felt the need to strike back. If he had said something about, you know, a Democratic uh, congressperson or Democratic senator, Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer probably would have said something a little slow and shady. This is what Mitch McConnell said. Mm -hmm. And Trump, oh, he's this, he's that. They deserve better leadership, Mitch said. Elaine, can you uh, get me some more? Lettuce leaves for my plate. (laughs) He gave this many. Mm -hmm. This is the number that he had to give Trump on that diss. Mm -hmm. And he just, you know, he's let it know. He's let it be known through his folks. First of all, Trump's talking about he's going to lead primary challenges. He was just reelected. Right. You're going to be dead in six years, Trump. I don't know why, why you talking, or at least your your disembodied head is going to be perfused in, in a jar somewhere, uh, and you're going to be headed to Futurama. Mitch McConnell ain't running again. Right. Mitch McConnell don't care nothing about you, and that's exactly why he said what he said. He has and nothing to lose. He has zero to lose, and Rob Portman and Richard Burr and uh, some of these other folks who decided to vote for impeachment because it was the right thing to do. And the little ignoramuses at their GOP local parties are censuring them and doing all these other things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. None to give. And you know why? Because I'm not running. I don't have to, I'm too old. I have my house. I have my second house. I'm chilling. Not this. (laughs) Man. Right. I just saw that. Are you not wrong though? Like, yeah. I hadn't thought about that until I read it. Then I was like, oh. now I can't get that out of my head. You can't. Yeah. He's saw doll from now on. He is yeah. saw doll. So that's all. Mitch McConnell says mm-hmm. no more Trump. Right. And so I, I want no Trumps. Trump is a word who can get no love from me. I'm done. I mean, I'm passenger side. Of, anyway. Um, but, um, speaking of Republicans, not talking to other Republicans. So here's something else that I saw in the news, um, unbeknownst to anybody, but shouldn't be a surprise either. There are some anti-Trump Republicans who are trying to form a center right third party and, and people are here for it. And so am I. So here's the interesting thing. When this all first started happening, I assumed that, that, Trump follower group would be an extreme right new party. And it seems mm-hmm. like they have now officially taken over the Republican Party and um, the Lincoln Project type folks who, uh, you know, the, the what they call the rhinos, the never Trumpers. They're like, yo, we're not with them and we're going to go do our own thing. And I don't know what they're going to call it. You know, maybe the centrist party or something like that. But they want to get back to um, the conservative views that uh, only marginally oppress people of color and you know didn't support this full on violence. They want to go back to, you know, just moderate erosion of rights and not just straight up anarchy. So, you know, but I'm here for it. I really think that that could I mean, that could help us again, start to fuel a three party system or a multi party system. I mean, you know, 
everybody will have to start running on their own merits and not really be able to count on this massive RNC slash DNC backing. You got to come with the real. And that's what that's when politics is really going to change. So, you know, do it. I dare you. Double dog dare you. Well, I, all I have to say is uh, here's a free tip from me. Brand yourselves as the conservative party because you'll confuse some of the Trumpers mm. and it will be clear what your party is for the quote unquote traditional uh, mainstream Republicans who are arbiters of, you know, uh, fiscal conservatism and, you know, certain evangelical sort of whatever issues, uh, uh, socially conscious issues that, that you like to be in the hard right mainstream of. Go on ahead and do that. If only for the reason that it will tickle me to no end to see this fracturing of, of this behemoth make it impossible for you to win. You'll get those, uh, those seats in the districts. You'll get those reps, definitely. Mm -hmm. But say goodbye to... Uh, to majorities in the mm -hmm. Senate. We'll see how it plays out in 2022. That's gonna be the first mm -hmm. bellwether of this, whether or not both of these two fragmented elements of the party actually can reconcile enough to get in. But 2022, baby, that's DeSantis coming up. That's uh, a whole slew of Senate seats coming up. Unfortunately, it's Warnock coming up, so we'll see. Uh, Purdue mm -hmm. has already signed that he is going to challenge Warnock for that seat because he does not want to be connected to Kelly Loeffler anymore. So. Uh, we're going to see how things play, uh, play out. Go ahead, Joy. It looks like you were trying to say something. You know, uh, what I would be interested to see. <laughs> hey, Erica. Hey, Dr. Erica. You know, um, I would be interested to see how that division plays out because there were a lot of people that voted Republican because they're single issue voters. The most common single issue being abortion. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. if you create a conservative party. Um, yes, you're going to have people who are actually fiscally conservative, maybe moderate, maybe even central. But you're going to grab those people who are one sing like single part, single issue voters that vote um, anti-abortion, that only voted for Trump for that reason. Mm -hmm. And the, the hardcore Trumpers are going to lose them. But they're also going to have to reckon with, are you really anti-abortion or are you pro-Trump the whole time? Were you using that as an excuse? And now where do your loyalties lie? Because that pro-Trump group, you got to get jumped out of that gang. Like they ain't, they ain't they don't play. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just some serious things out there, you know. So um, the next thing I want to talk about, if y'all will indulge me, indulge. is, um, you know, so we're talking about the, the hardcore uh, right. We're talking about that group, you know, the Proud Boys and the, the um, uh, you know, you will not replace us, oh. all those type of people and everything that's going on. And what popped up again after, what is this, 14 years, is this report. So they unredacted an FBI document that talked about the infiltration of white supremacy into law enforcement. This article came out, or this report came out in 2006. The report is already actually 15 years old at this point. And the data in the report was already 10 years old because they had been collecting that information. So you're going back to all the way to 96 when all of us was just got out of college and they were talking about well, well, um, wait, no. what I, I had been out of college for a while in 96. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I mean, some of some of y'all younger than me. But go ahead, Joy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on it. Go ahead. We, we were all still relatively young in our years. Put it Young-ish. that way. Yes. <laughs> Young -ish. Uh, we was new grown. Yes. Youngish. We was newgrown. And um, <laughs> and they were talking about that already. And that information, they were already infiltrating. And so I, I talk about this sometimes when I do my training. If you are if you're a new hire at a corporation in 1996, by 2006, you are a, a senior leader or a manager. You are, you're responsible for other people. By 2016, you're a VP. You're making massive decisions. You got budgets, et cetera. So I don't know why people would think that an infiltration into law enforcement 15, uh, actually at this point, 25 years ago, means that they're all still just beating the street. No, they've progressed. They are now the the, the police rep, police union rep, mm -hmm. the chief of police, the mm -hmm. sergeants training the new hires. They're the ones that decide whether or not you're going to get promoted or get ousted. Are you going to be excluded or included? All of that kind of stuff. So when you have you know, black people, Hispanic people, every, uh, everybody else that tries to become a member of the police force, they get exited mm -hmm. by people who were put there 15 years before that to make sure they got exited. Think about the fact that a former Marine became a police officer, I want to say in South Carolina, 
And he got fired for not shooting someone. Mm. He had to fight to get his job back yeah. because he learned how to de-escalate things in the military. Right. And because he actually did it, they were like, well, you endangered other people's lives by not shooting. He's like, I'm the only one here. You know, <laughs> so all of this just shows you how pervasive it is. And this goes back to our discussion last week about um, the new, um, oh, what's his name? Department of Defense, Austin. Yes, Austin. Yes. Um, getting rid of all racist elements in the military. That is a great start. But we got to also get rid of all the racist elements in our law enforcement on the streets. And you're talking about cutting that force by half, if you do, and all well, the way up the ranks. Well, not for nothing, uh, there's a report out today that 35 officers have been suspended for their conduct during the Capitol riot. Six of them have been actually charged and arrested. So you had cops with MAGA hats saying, yeah, right over, go mm -hmm. up in there. And just mm -hmm. them to the steps right there. No, just push on the dough. You, you <laughs> push, push, right. push the hall. You got to get Bathrooms out. Bathrooms on the left. Send it straight ahead. Leave so, your badge. It, want, want to borrow this? Here. <laughs> and so these guys, if you think it was only 35, you're fooling yourself. It's not just 35. And Those these the militarized dudes who were uh, all dressed in tactical gear and all that other stuff, they have training. They're all over the place. And mm -hmm. these are the people who are making decisions about policy that affect everybody. It's not just at the federal level. You have people, like, like Joy said, it's not just a matter of you moving up within that one police force. You move up, you get recognized by the district office of the FBI, now you're in the FBI, and now you're, you go back and uh, you mm -hmm. do all these other things. You're at Quantico now, and now you're training folks at Quantico, and now there's a whole bunch of Quantic Heights right beneath you and all this other stuff. It's crazy. And all of it has to do with the radical militarization of our police forces and how white supremacists who were seeking the training and seeking the access to the weapons decided to only moderately hide. Let's be clear. It's not like they're <coughs> they're hiding a lot. Mm -mm. They they got those Germanic tattoos and 88 and all that other mm -hmm. stuff on there. And the, they're, the all in, they're all over Facebook. Uh, all with over their, Facebook. That's how most of them are called. Exactly. So, you know, right now, there are uh, the FBI took all these social media posts and they are putting up there and they have tags on them, you know, uh, basically attacked a cop, uh, just attacked the, the Capitol. There's a person who is a particular person of interest right now who is photographed gouging out the eye of a police officer. And he lost that eye and mm -hmm. he turned right to the camera like. Mm -hmm. But blue lives matter, though. Blue lives matter, though. Mm -hmm. He stabbed his eye out. With, a, with his bare hands. With his bare hands. But we're the animals for protesting. Right. Mm -hmm. Injustice. Right. You kill him. You, meanwhile, you kill him, police. Mm -hmm. This is where we are as a country. And I don't yeah. like what I see. Go yeah. ahead, Joy. I'm just saying, you know, the uh, that whole, the ability to see what is going on in the, the far right and to not do anything about it and to just callously say, you know, it is what it is. That's ice cold. Ice cold. And speaking of ice cold, Oof. I want to take a moment to, I want to take a moment. I, I want a moment of silence for my people in Texas. There's a lot of things going on in my home state. Um, I had to Absolutely. check on my sister Cause she's still living there. I called, um, she called me cause I'm afraid to call her and burn up her minutes and stuff. So she called me to let me know that they had a gas stove and a gas heater. And so they're all either in the kitchen or in this one room that we never went in as children, mm -hmm. uh, trying to stay warm. Uh, people are telling me that they are putting their food outside to keep it frozen because the power's out. Oh, yeah. And it's better than the refrigerator. It's better than the refrigerator, you know? Um, and then when the power does come on, they're scrambling to get something cooked charge some phones or whatever, people sitting in their car to be to be warm and to charge their electronics so they can stay in touch and figure out what's going on. And while all this is happening, you have all of these leaders out of um, out of uh, te Texas who are doing nothing. So I'm just going to show this real quick. I'm going to read this to you. Thanks. I'm going to read this to you. And what you see here is a discussion that says, who had the most authentically Republican response to millions of Texans losing power and freezing? One, Governor Abbott blaming the Green New Deal, which isn't even really a thing yet. It's just an idea. Exactly. Two, Ted Cruz flying to Cancun. Or three, Rick Perry 
saying that given a choice, Texans would rather freeze to death than have government regulations. Um, sir, no, they don't. I have not heard a single person that lives in Texas say, you know what, I'm cool. Just let me freeze to death. Free, you know, freezing for freedom. Ain't nobody saying that. Nobody. Ain't nobody thinking that way. They're sitting here like, can we get on the grid? Can I get on the grid? Can I get some grid from Oklahoma? You know, can I go to New Orleans and get some grid? Because I need some electricity because I'm freaking freezing and dying out here. You know, you cannot volunteer somebody else's life for your comfort or principle or whatever. That's what's wrong with war as a whole. It's sending other people out to do what you want them to do for your ideals that they never agreed to. But that's a whole nother story. But I will say I very much enjoyed the um the things that i saw on the internet that followed this and so now i would like to take a moment to introduce you to a, a new segment uh, or a single segment that i'm calling the dragging first up let's talk about this <laughs> <laughs> so y'all know that ted cruz got busted because he and his family tried to fly to cancun and then he blamed it on his children. He said, my kids wanted to get away because they had the week off because school was closed and just wanted to do something for them. So I was just going to go for the night. I was just flying them down there, you know, just as a chaperone or whatever. Uh -huh. Bro, you got a week's worth of suitcase. What you talking about? So I love this meme because it's very much true because, you know, his kids don't like him. No way. Have you ever seen him on camera trying to kiss them? They're like, oh, cooties, back up, old dude. Who is you? Wait, so, but see, um, to be fair. If this meme were accurate, that child he's holding would be under a bus because that's he threw his, his own children under a bus. Yes. Right. A bus. And uh, this one was more general, you know, said maybe <laughs> building a grid instead of a wall. Mm -hmm. now, I, I have to say on this topic, uh, my hometown of Beaumont is right adjacent. It's a part of the Golden Triangle. So it's so close to Louisiana that they're actually on Louisiana's power grid. So thankfully, my relations mm -hmm. that live in Beaumont are not as badly off as uh, my cousins and uncles in Houston. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, th this this live energy free or die foolishness, Rick Perry. Oops. Right. You know, and there was another one. I mean, there's another thing that when I saw a picture of the Texas grid as opposed to the West uh, West Coast and East Coast grids that the rest of the country is on, an interesting thing that you see is that the panhandle, Amarillo, is not on the same thing as everybody else. So Amarillo, which most people in Texas ridicule as the armpit of Oklahoma or whatever, Amarillo is nice and warm right yeah. now because they are on the regular grid. But there's some more stuff I want to show you. So first off, you know, the Simpsons never disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it because I'm pretty sure this is exactly what it looked like. Like, hey, you know, hey, Rasta, stop. Shush, shush. <laughs> Anybody supposed to know you here, son? <laughs> right. And you got to love this. You know, Texans freezing to death after their state's entire power grid goes down. Ted Cruz is like, ooh, can't cool, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got a couple more and then I'm going to quit. So um, you got this one because, you know, the Perseverance rover just made it <laughs> to Mars. <laughs> You Ted know what? was trying to get as far as possible, y'all. I just got to say, they shouldn't have never gave y'all the internet. This is not what Al Gore intended. And the photoshops. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but this is a damn good picture. They photoshop a shadow on here and everything. It's pretty good. Yeah, they that's did impressive. the entire thing. And they yeah. had the shadow at the proper perspective because you can yeah. see yeah, the tight. rover shadow and you got his shadow. Somebody right. this had is time. That's yeah. right. Somebody had time today. This is time. Yeah. Yeah. My last one, and I love this because I used to see people coming back from uh, their over, you know, their their foreign trips all the time. So you know, Ted Cruz. If you lie. like pina coladas <laughs> and getting dissed by your wife when you're running from Texas just to try to save your life. <laughs> them braids, though. Them braids. Them braids. Those braids were killing me, and killing. I was here for it. Killing me. So, you know, hats off to everybody. Now, I will say this. I don't appreciate at all the people who are ridiculing the constituency 
in Texas. Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of people. Because remember, Texas is almost as purple as Georgia. There's a yeah. whole lot of people didn't ask right. for this, didn't want this. Some folks that grew up never knowing that Texas was on a different grid from the rest of the country. And this is a shock to them. Like, yeah. the hell you mean? We different can't get no grid. power from Oklahoma. Say what now? You know, so um, I don't appreciate ridiculing them or the, or the state as a whole. It's yeah. not funny to sit in, you know, Minnesota and go, negative 10, that's nothing. Because you got heat, son. Right. So, you know, or it's plus, And plus you're used to it. Yeah. Right. You know, these right. Texas folks, they ain't used to that, though. Right. And it's not snowed to accumulate on the ground in Texas Mm-mm. since, like, no, in they, Houston, they at least, since, like, 1985 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so they're struggling. Yeah, oh, thank you, Harry. I do think she wants to divorce him. So here's the other thing that you may not have heard, although I'm sure you might have, is that um, you know he's talking all this yin yang about, oh my kids wanted to go and I just wanted to take care of my children who hate me. I'm trying to buy their love with tickets to Cancun. And so what it ended up being was his wife was inviting other people like, hey, we're going down to Cancun to get out of this shithole state. So if you want to come with us, ride here's out. The, here's the booking code. <laughs> it's three hundred dollars a night at the Ritz Carlton, and mm-hmm. they have occupancy. Trust, we gonna get lit. We love that it's private, it's safe. We can have a grand old time. Do the guy do COVID protocols. He's wearing a mask in the airport. They even um his aides even asked the airport to help him get through security with assistance. The audacity, the unmitigated gall, and of all of you dog owners in Texas. He left that unfortunate poodle at the house. Mm. They were supposed to be gone for four days. Yeah. That poodle at the window light. Mm-hmm. I hope Peter drags his ass too. I mean, somebody said, the dog said, I got a bathtub full of water and a 20 pound bag of kibble. I guess it's a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, we've been dragging Cruz, but there's somebody else that oh, um, deserves a, a posthumous dragon. And, and Chuck, I'm actually about to throw this to you because your boy. Yeah. Um, and Rush Limbaugh is dead. Rush Limbaugh is dead. You know, it's uh, we, we have always been taught being raised up in the church. I'm an AME now. I was raised a Baptist. So we all got taught with the same mores. You shouldn't speak ill of the dead. You shouldn't be gleeful when someone dies. And, and, and I struggle with it. I, I do. I, I really do because Not me. I, I just do. I, it, it's, you know, one of these days when I'm before God, I, I'm going to have to answer for, uh, you know, how gleeful I was the other day. Uh, it was just downright funny to me. I mean, once the meme started that we're going to show, uh, I was thinking those thoughts, which is what made the memes that much funnier. Like, like, wow, Rush is dead. And it's, Snap smack dab in the middle of Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is a man that tortured black people for the better part of 30, 40 years of his uh broadcast, whatever you want to call it. And and I have some particularly strong views. You know, in the last year or two, we've talked quite a bit about uh, and you've seen people write about mediocre white males. And, and one of the things that I have always pushed back on through the years about Rush Limbaugh, as well as John Hannity, as well as Glenn Beck, uh, I, I've always called them the troika of evil, so to speak. What's interesting about all three is that if you put their college credits together, you mm-hmm. might have a second semester freshman worth of credit between the three. And I'm not trying to be elitist. I, you know, college isn't for everybody. There are some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant people who never attended college or attended and dropped out. I mean, you know, who wouldn't want to be Bill Gates? He was at Harvard for barely a year and he's worth everything, so to speak. Right. So I get it. I know that, you know, going to college is not necessarily the end all be all to all industries. But when you are in an industry such as journalism, and you're in an industry where you hold yourself out to be an expert on political topics and social topics. That's right. And you realize that when you listen to them, if you listen to all three of these, and I know it's difficult for many of our followers to listen to five minutes of a Rush Limbaugh show or a Mr. Hannity or Mr. Beck, but I have through the years, I've listened to them and I am always amazed at how dense they can be on some subjects, not on all subjects, but on many subjects. 
it's either they didn't grasp the point from American history or they grasped it and they just retreated back to whatever their racist uh, basic core beliefs are. And so to me, I've always been somewhat offended. You know, we've talked about it before we came on air. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Rush, uh, who is not that intellectually curious, is held out by millions of our fellow Americans as one of the brightest guys to ever walk the face of earth of the earth. They think on the right that he is like Yoda. They think that he's Socrates, so to speak. Okay. And when you really cut through the chase, he really isn't. What what he was, in my humble estimation, is that Uncle Nearest is starting to kick in. In my <laughs> humble estimation, what Rush Limbaugh really was was an individual who had no problem whatsoever in spitting out white grievance. Mm. He, more than anybody else in the last 30 years, is directly responsible for making a whole lot of white people believe that it is okay to be nasty, to be vitriolic, to say whatever it is that you want to say. Ditto. And that, when you look at Donald Trump, so to speak, and what all he has done over the last four years, Trump is just the outward manifestation of a disease that Rush Limbaugh created, so to speak. Once the FCC changed the rules up and he started to first get his TV show, then his radio show, they were going at the same time. And then sitting there in that studio five days a week, three hours a day with almost 100 million, mostly of our fellow white conservative Americans listening to that foolishness day in and day out. And so I'm not going to mourn that because he probably more than anybody else, because I consider Hannity and I consider Beck and those to be wannabes. They bit off the original and they try to be him. But at the end of the day, he is responsible directly for where we are right now. So again, I lost no sleep. Matter of fact, I slept better on the night he passed than I have probably since COVID-19 really became a thing around this time last year. So with that, we can go ahead and commence with the dragon joint. All right. You know, I just want to say as I bring up these memes that uh, Chuck, that may not have been the eulogy that he wanted, but that's the eulogy that he deserved. Absolutely. So I'm digging it. And so in memoriam, here we have a few things to remember about uh, Rush Limbaugh. When you heard he was dying <laughs> during Black History Month. You know, he said, you know, I just thought it would be nice to finally do something useful for Black History Month. So I died. And, you know, even you know how hard it is to make a preacher mad. So Bishop Talbert Swan tweeted, Rush Limbaugh mocked people dying of AIDS, made fun of Parkinson's disease, called America's first black president Barack the Magical Negro. He was a vile, pompous, white supremacist who spread racist and hatred, bidding him good riddance or wishing him to rot in hell is being kind. This is from Bishop Talbert Swan. You know how, how crazy and vile you gotta be to aggravate a man of God like this, but he did it. You know, but he also aggravated uh, uh, cancer, you know, because he had stage four. <laughs> you know, I, I can breathe because I follow the law. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I took that personally. <laughs> And uh, okay, so this is my last one, and then and then I'm gonna quit. So um, you know, hey, claims to be pro life <laughs> dies anyway. Liar! And look, he's got his he's got his earpiece on there because he killed his hearing uh, from taking too much oxy. Mm. Trash, really? Just trash. Hot trash. Hot garbage. And, and, and Tom, that brings up another point. You know, the mainstream media, more often than not, when someone dies. They will bring up particularly like when it's been a black man or a black woman who's died in police custody or under dubious circumstances. They'll bring up the time that they cheated on their seventh grade science test. I mean, mm. it's it's really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so for me to even see some of the mainstream media articles, I'm not even talking about the right wing stuff. Right. Th th there was a lack of discussing the fact that this was a man who was charged with felonies, with uh, the whole Oxycontin situation. Mm -hmm. Um, a man who has made all kind of vile comments about women. I mean, oh, aside yeah. from the black stuff, I mean, that, that's near and dear to us. I mean, he constantly pushed the envelope with regards to trying to minimize rape, uh, called Sandra Fluck, the Georgetown law student, a prostitute and a slut just because she was advocating 
before contraceptives. I mean, this was a man, I think he called Chelsea Clinton when she was a preteen, a dog, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is no one who was worthy of being lauded. And yet, right down here in my home state of Florida, perfect segue into our next segment, Ron DeSantis is going to lower the flags here in Florida to honor Rush Limbaugh. And I saw some funny comments earlier today, too, about are those going to be the Confederate flags? Because a lot of people Ooh. tend to try to forget. People, you know, it always used to burn me when I was in undergrad and, and mm -hmm. what have you. Oh, no, Florida is not like this. No, Florida's the South. I, I don't know who told you Florida's not like the South. I mean, and even back prior to the last 40 years, even Miami and South Florida was the South. There was Jim Crow all through Miami. I think just last week on Facebook, I posted a picture that discussed what my grandmother, who was a domestic worker, used to talk about. They used to have to have papers to be able to go and work on Miami Beach. People forget that because they of the Cuban influx with the Marialitos and all the Latin and salsa dancing. Uh -uh, that ain't that's recent Florida. Old school Florida was no different than Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and all the rest of them. So with that in mind, it frustrates me to see Ron DeSantis, you know, appealing to the lowest common denominator. But I'm not shocked. You know, he's Trump light. He wants to be president of the United States. Uh, he does not hide the fact that that's what he wants to be. He won't be, but that's the goal for him. So he is trying to take up the baton as the I'm going to be the smarmy, uh, curse out, fuss at, and be nasty to the press candidate and what have you to try to impress those Trump voters going forward. So, yeah, they're going to be half uh, staff here soon uh, in, in the next day or two, and I'm just going to be shrugging my shoulders as I ride by government buildings here in Tallahassee and realize that. You know, Chuck, when I first came down to FAMU from Michigan, well, technically I graduated high school from Chicago, but my family moved to Michigan right before I came down to mm -hmm. Florida. And I don't know if it's still the city slogan, <coughs> but when I moved down to FAMU, Tallahassee slogan was Florida with a Southern accent. Yeah, it's no longer it, but okay. that was the long right. And I was just slow. like, "Ooh, right, you right." Were saying something right there. Because... They were stringing folks up about a quarter mile away from the FAMU. In fact, the old hanging tree, the old lynching tree, is still up about right. a quarter mile away. Um, that's always a big controversy here because there's a lot of development that's going on in the area. There are two nice hotels coming up, and there's mm -hmm. an amphitheater. But right off, if you know what you're looking at, that's the tree they used to string us up from. So. Yeah, Tallahassee and Florida is no different than the rest of the South. Yeah, it's 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 not something um, that should go unsaid. Yeah, um, but hope, we we know DeSantis is trash. So yeah, I hope all the ancestors and predecessors that lost their lives to white violence in Florida haunt the ever loving shit out of Rush Limbaugh for the rest of eternity. <laughs> Ditto. No complaints from me. I, I don't know if y'all. That's the second time I tried to make that uh, sub reference, and y'all didn't get it. That was that was a ditto heads. Of, ditto heads. I caught it <laughs> because people they would call and they'd say ditto because basically they were saying everything that Rush said they absolutely copied and agreed with. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. Torment him, torment right. him, ancestors from afar, because right. I know you're not in that same pit. But if there are some um, black folks who are in that same pit with him. I want you to, to stab the hell out I of him. I mean, if heaven is supposed to be everything enjoyable, I would enjoy that. And I feel like they should at least be able to like pee on him from heaven, something, you know. Oh, did you want some ice water? Well, this is as close as you're gonna get, son. That was terrible what I just said. At least it's room temperature. <laughs> it's gonna feel cold when you're burning, right? That's what I'm saying. You know? Speaking of burning, this is just an aside. Chuck posted something today on his wall that took me down memory lane. Y'all remember when Mickey D's used to sell those deep fried pockets of molten lava with apple chunks in it? Yes, and sir. You, you get that pie and the <laughs> grease was so hot that the pastry would actually turn into little pockets of bubbles. It looked like the surface of the moon. And you get that, they had a sleeve dare you to hold that thing in your fingers. It had a paper little sleeve box thing so you can kind of slide it out. You mess around and bite the wrong corner off and that lava goes into your throat and you'd be like, ah! ah. <laughs> you gotta be, but you're not gonna spit it out. Yeah. No, you ain't gonna spit it out. That's that good pie. 
Right. That was some good pie. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope that Rush Limbaugh has old McDonald's lava pie poured onto him nonstop <laughs> for the next hundred thousand years. Lava pie. <laughs> lava pie. And guess what, uh, Rush? The shake machine is broken. <laughs> can't even get you no ice creamy relief because that man that pie a la mode you take that little sundae you take that ice cream cone mm -hmm. and you, you tuck that ice cream cone on and it turns into creme anglaise up in that bitch yes, mm -hmm. tonight we are having the um, uh, the uh, pie it is deep fried as well as uh, the creme anglaise <laughs> uh, which comes from the ice cream machine uh, or it is broken. I guess you will just have to put asbestos on your tongue <laughs> to protect you from the scalding temperature. <laughs> um, that was, <laughs> you guys are cold. Yeah, I guess we are cold. The only thing, clo they closed the churches. We ain't even got churches anymore. COVID knocked the churches right off Winneka Avenue. Oh, man. Oh, man. And they closed the one here in Tallahassee because uh, it just wasn't generating the type of business that it used to. There's right. one up in Thomasville, Georgia, right up the street, but Man, I used to love uh, churches, uh, fried okra, as a matter of fact. Uh, if you're a fried okra lover, that's right. Uh, churches have some excellent fried okra. But I you know, not, the thing is, Tom, also on a personal level, uh, when, when our young frat brothers uh, at FAMU were going through the trial situation back mm -hmm. in 2006, that jackass rush had about a 10 minute segment on that trial uh, while we were waiting for a verdict. And I'll never forget like wishing I could get on the microphone with him when he was basically saying, you know, wow, what those we need to send the uh the the, the prisoners at Gitmo up to the Alpha Z Kappa Alpha Psi. I mean, the way they meet out punishment, and I was just wanting to get my hands or well, let, let you, you I, couldn't. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was uh, that, frustrating. That, uh, that throat is way too Java esque. Th this this is true. This is true. It takes Shaquille's hands probably to uh. To, to, to make it happen right. But it was frustrating on a personal level. And then it got even more personal years later when Eric Garner, and we already oh. showed the meme, you know, with the I can't breathe, that you would joke about that, you know, and that was so personal to so many of us listening to that man say that, you know, over and over, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And he's joking about it. So I kind of was looking at my computer all week when everybody was like, oh, we're better than this. And, oh, I wouldn't wish cancer on my worst enemy. And I'm just sitting there thinking, well, I must be an awful individual because I, it didn't bother me at all that that's, that's what took Rush out. But can I say, yeah, I didn't wish that cancer on him. Right. That cigar them, gave him them that. Them cigars that were True. wishing that cancer on him. That's a good was, point, he Tom. He was sucking on them. Right. And and let's not forget how he talked trash about Monica Lewinsky, but you sure did have that cigar in your mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't wish cancer on him. Yeah, I didn't unwish it, and I didn't wish it off him. Right. But I certainly didn't wish it on him. My conscience is clear, and it might not be the most you know uh, nice thing to say, but I am not at all perturbed. I am not bothered. I am not ruffled. I am uh, mm -hmm. not betwixt, no. betraggled, you know, or bedrawn. Nothing. It reminds me of. Um, uh, Christian Bale's first Batman movie, where mm -hmm. towards the end, what is it? Uh, Ra's al Ghul is like, you can't kill me. And he says, I'm not going to kill you. But I don't have to save you. Mm. And so I feel mm -hmm. like the same thing. I am not going to go out of my way to, um, you know, vilify or, or go up against or try to fight, you know, someone along the lines of Rush Limbaugh. But I ain't got to be sad you did. You sure don't, Joy. And, and on top of that, don't let people steal your 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 memes or your thunder yeah. or your joy, so to speak, no pun intended, with the commentary. You know, you, we had a lot of negative Neds trying to come on. You all shouldn't do this. And this is wrong. And, and Chuck, you're a Christian. And I'm surprised that, well, you, you, it's a lot of things about me that you'd be surprised about if you knew. So, like, with that in mind, just add this up. I, I got a whole lot of things I need forgiveness for. Uh, over the course of 48 years, and I'll just add this to it, that I found delight the other day when I when Sharon sent it to us in the group chat that Rush was gone. And, it, and actually, my first thought was, damn, it took longer than I thought. I, I, it, it's, it's you know, and I know that's mean, but I mean, it, that, 
sometimes I'm not nice. That's all I'm trying to say. It, it's, you know, he had stage four for over a year. And I'm just sitting here thinking about all the people who didn't make it a year with stage four cancer, including my own father. So with that in mind, like I like, you know, Rush lived a long time, made a lot of money uh, and, and fomented a lot of misery on a lot of people. So I ain't whatever. Later, yeah. dude. Like, but he ain't saying thank, thank you, Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Mark Stephanie. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> None. Zero instances of coitus. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, speaking of coitus wow. and, and sex uh -oh. and love and marriage, uh -oh. um, I want to segue into, I, I guess we'll call this pop culture for mm -hmm. the time being. For those of you who haven't heard, um, Kim Ye is about to be divorced or actually Kim Kardashian West has filed for divorce from Kanye. And I put this head on up because Kanye believes that this cost him his marriage, that uh, his failed presidential run is what cost him his marriage. Now, I also, I'm, I'm going to take this down. I also want you to remember that while he was on his campaign trail, one of the first stops he made, he spoke at length, rambling about their uh, the birth of their child, how he didn't want to have it, how mm. they were talking about abortion, how she protected the child. And ultimately, he was trying to, uh, I believe, in his uh, fugue state, he was trying to say that his wife was a good person. But what he right. did was put all their business out Street. on the street. All of it. You know, and um, I I'm going to take a moment because I've seen that before. Uh, quick story. When I was living in Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, I won't go into who and what and when and why and where, but I was at a church revival at night in Tennessee. So, you know, it was lit, right? Uh, snake, snake biting and people from tongue all that shit. So, <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot for me. And so, um, this, these one little, two little boys decided they were going to do a tribute. But of course, you know, everything ain't always the way it should be. So, they end up singing, uh, I Believe I Can Fly. That was their tribute song, and it was kind of terrible. But you know, you forgive children for not knowing how to the sing. Children. But they moved everybody, and at the end, this one lady got up and she said, "I'm so proud of this little boy. Y'all don't know. I just, I just can't believe how he's turned out. You know, Brenda, I remember when you weren't sure you wanted to have him, and now look at what he's going to. Everybody's oh, like, oh, oh, God, <laughs> way too much information. Way too much." We're like, gonna have a selection from the choir. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> right. Not good. No so, bueno. To your point, Chuck, earlier, you know, people said we might go to hell for the things that we're saying here tonight. I've been told I need Jesus at least on a quarterly basis since yeah. I was 16 years old. So I'm going to hell for a lot of things. I got friends in the chat room, Tara, Farah, Anisha, Rochelle, Erica, Valencia, all of them know. <laughs> I was about to say it sounded like you were doing a DMX song. Oh, I'm trying to say, okay, yeah, about three yeah. films. <laughs> All I have to say is, um, yes, it happened in West Tennessee. <laughs> you my know, brother, it was. <laughs> my brother is a Catholic priest, and I know all of the sacraments, and so I can confess before I get last rites. There it is. So. Uh, and I'm from the shade. Jesus that wasn't low key shade. That was high key shade. I don't know. People talk about low key. Ain't nothing low key about <laughs> telling somebody's business about Brenda. Remember when you didn't even want to have him? Yeah. There's high key and there's low key. Get your terms right. <laughs> All the keys. <laughs> All the keys. There's Alicia oh. keys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we've had a lot of fun. We've talked about a lot of different things, but we're moving into it's about that time. Okay. We're moving into one of my favorite segments of the show, Gangster of the Week. Of the Week, Week, Week. And I think it's appropriate this time. Uh, we didn't say it at the top of the show. Our good friend and co-host Sharon is working. She is a woman who works, and she is working. And so she could not be with us tonight. But we are going to lift our glasses, our here, here. little uh, glasses to you, Sharon, because this is your segment, and uh, I am going to kick off this week with my gangster of the week, and that is New York Congressperson 
Alexandria Cathy Cortez. Really? And she is my gangster because when Ted was getting his hair braided at the Cancun airport, she just went on ahead and raised $2 million for Texas relief Mm -hmm. and is flying down to Texas to pass out relief packages with a fellow Latina congressperson from Texas. And while Cruz is caught in the midst of the worst news cycle arguably of his career certainly the worst news cycle since he called he shut down the government and had uh, everybody had to come back the week before christmas uh, he was catching l's from everybody on that one but this is bad and for those you know i think ted thought when he started growing that uh, covid struggle beard that he was gonna like man up he's he gonna get some testosterone he didn't count on the double chin that that beard was going to be sprouting on and then when you start like talking people. trash about other states and how they can't do this, that, and the third, and how uh, they can't even keep their people, blah, 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 blah. And then Governor Abbott starts talking trash about how uh, it's, it's because of the windmills. You know, it's, just, it's just foolishness. Mm -hmm. And you got caught straight out there and your first instinct was not to be a man and say, you know what? It was a mistake. It was poor judgment. And uh, I, I agree that uh, it was an irresponsible choice. And so I'm coming back. You're going to throw your own cheering mm -hmm. under the bus. I mean, That's they don't know him anyway. So, you know, he ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> right. Well, that's and that's true. what you choose to do. You didn't have to do that, Ted. Yeah. Uh, I should say, Rafael Eduardo Cruz. You did not have to do that with your half Canadian ass. You did mm. not. What was that a boot? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> you know, but um, you mentioned about the, the windmills and the misinformation. So that, that brings me to my gangster of the week. Now I'm gonna tell you before I, before I show this picture and I will read you the picture, but um, all of our gangsters of the week don't have to be famous. They don't have to be people that, people that you know. Sometimes the most gangster move comes out of somebody you've never met and are never going to meet. Never hoid so them. I put together it's it's two tweets that I got from um one of the actually she's a she's a black female doctor. And since all of my best friends are black female doctors, I feel like I know at least 30 to 50 percent of all the black wow. female doctors in the country. So I saw this tweet on her page and it brought me so much joy. Like I I, I cannot get it. This is my gangster move of the week. So we're gonna start on the left. Uh, Shantae James, MD, she said, an old school doc, old school meaning old white dude, in the lounge was laughing, saying that power's out in Texas because windmills are frozen. And someone said, that is absolutely wrong. Wind power is less than 10% of Texas's power grid. The lounge went silent. So it sounds like we've given up peace for Lent and I am living for the violence. <laughs> Ah, look at her curled <laughs> fingers and the flames, though. <laughs> and that little tongue flip she got. Ah! <laughs> and then she gave an update a little bit later. She said, y'all, the doctor that called out, you know, that frozen windmill lie, he just passed me on the way out of the lounge and said, you can't fix stupid, but you can verbally sedate it. And oh. then he gave me a comment <laughs> over sign, and I cannot breathe. She cannot breathe, y'all. She said, breathe. <laughs> that is funny. I am living for it. So I do not know the doctor that she's talking about, but sir, sir, I love you. My hat's off. I spend my days. I spend not only my days and nights, but my weekends, my evenings, putting together all these things to talk to corporate entities, nonprofits, et cetera, about what it looks like to be an ally. This. This. Right here. And, and I love the phrase, you can't fix stupid, but you can verbally sedate it. Sedate Another it. One, shut that shit up. And uh, again, don't let that misinformation, because this is Governor Abbott talking about windmills, you know, being a problem. And this dude was spreading that lie. He's like, no, sir, no ma'am, no ham, no spam. Well, we're not doing the day. Is this bullshit. It ain't First got no of problem. All, can I tell you, because I like, like Joy, I was born in Texas. Mm -hmm. Once you get past San Antonio, it ain't nothing but dry desert. If you are going west, you drive out of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You got a good, what is it, about 12 hours? Yep. 
16 hours on that one stretch of road. You might as well put windmills up in that bitch. Ain't nothing else growing. Ain't nothing out there. Nothing. You might see a Stuckies every 10 miles <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> wow. That's what you go get on, on, on that stretch of land. It's mm. the American Autobahn. Mm. That's a little piece because they don't even patrol it because it's just too hot and dry and crazy. You can go 110 on that stretch. Mm -hmm. And as long as you aren't close to one horse town, huh? So the cops ain't coming out there. They don't they get They sure ain't coming out there. Drive, drive. Mm. So um, I'm not sure. If, uh, Chuck, do you have a gangster for the week? He does. I okay. do. And ho hold on. Oh, I don't. Yeah, you just you just got to call this one, Chuck. Okay, very good. My gangster of the week is the Grim Reaper for. <laughs> Tapping Rush Limbaugh on the shoulder and saying it's time to tap out, son. <laughs> <laughs> time is up. So shout out to the Green Reaper and my best butthead voice from Beavis and Butthead. We have not come to bury Rush, but uh later, dude. That's pretty much all I got for him. So as later. you can tell, I'm still happy three days later, and I'm gonna continue celebrating throughout the weekend. I mean, Grim Reaper. Yeah, man. I know he's coming for me someday too, but hey, I'm here and he ain't. So uh it's what wow. it is. Mm -hmm. Did Chuck <laughs> <laughs> Yes he did. <laughs> yes he did. Oh, you said hold on. Uh we are headed into the uh segment of the show that we call y'all mm -hmm. all right and uh we have a couple of things obviously this was uh, a very crazy week for us um uh but there were some ups and there were some downs there were some things that uh probably did not happen exactly the way that we thought they were going to happen but uh, you know, it, it's just the way of the world sometimes. So going ahead, Joy. Um, what? I'm sorry. I was I I was thrown it's by the camera. No, no, no. <laughs> Central Park. Oh, this. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for getting you me back it. because I was so like I'm still sitting here looking at the comments like Chuck. So anyway, so <laughs> here's something that. So the y'all is not, like you said, sometimes not always what you want it to be. So this bullshit right here. Y'all remember Amy Cooper? Mm -hmm. so the case against Amy Cooper has been dropped because she finished <laughs> racial bias classes. Mm. Let me tell you something. I've seen racial bias classes. It's one of the reasons that I have my own version of racial bias classes because I'm gonna take it to you. I'm coming to the hoop on you. I'm 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 going hard in the paint. I I make people cry because I need mm. you to understand how serious this is. And I'm absolutely positively 100 percent sure that her racial bias class consisted of a definition um and a don't feel bad and a hey it wasn't your fault do better next time. I feel like this is a slap on the wrist. I feel like she should have done the hard time and Almost every instance of violence perpetuated against black people by mobs of crazy white people started with some white woman doing the same thing that she did. You can't tell me she didn't understand the power that she wielded. You can't tell me that uh, a, a 90 minute or, or two, two hour bias class is gonna fix her because she never really owned up to what she did. Did she ever apologize to him? But can we talk about how she was so wrapped up in her privilege and hate that she choked out her own dog. Mm. Yeah. She choked out her own dog while she was talking to the cops so that she could make the point and try to get this brother to lose his freedom. And he said, you know, she lost her job. They're thinking about kicking her out of her apartment. You know, they're about to take her dog. She was able to keep the dog finally, but they did take the dog away for a while. But he was like, nah, you know, I, I'm not going to press charges. I'm done with it. It had turned into a firestorm that was, that was you know, transforming his life as well. He's, the brother said he didn't want to do it. It's not the move I would have made, mm -hmm. um, but they dropped the charges uh, after she did her little stuff. The thing that got me and made me say, y'all, 
was when her lawyer said she might be considering further legal action. For what? For and why? I said, Cooper, Against who? Cooper, you were committing a crime. Mm -hmm. The crime was caught on tape. Mm -hmm. Sit your ass right down because you have no further legal action. What, you're upset that your company fired you for being the most racist person that week? What? It, go sit down. I'm sure you have a little nest egg, although, you know, it's been a year uh, COVID and, and I don't think you have a new job. So I'm not trying to hear you. You need to sit it down and shut it down. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody want to hear from you anymore, Amy Cooper. Yeah. They didn't want to hear this about you. They were hoping to hear something like, you know, you got jumped in Orange is the New Black or something. That's what they <laughs> wanted to hear. But hearing that you got off scot-free, got off with some, some touchy-feely counseling or whatever, and, you know, sit down, Amy, let's talk. And, and the first words out of your lawyer's mouth are she's considering further legal action. Have you considered an in-person apology where you speak the man's name? Right. Have you thought about that? Especially since his last name is the same as yours. All you had to do was one differentiated name from a name you say every damn day of your life. And you yeah. still haven't apologized to that man. She could have got that brother killed, man. She could have. And that's the and thing she that continues. Yeah. She, she could have been killed. So fine with it. Yeah. Hang on. Let's look at this parallel. So, you know, like we said, there are people that, you know, think that we and people like us are wrong for reveling in the uh, expected death of Rush Limbaugh and that we shouldn't we shouldn't say bad things about him. But they were totally fine and people like them were totally fine with this woman potentially having this man murdered by the police mm, because sure. he dared to tell her to follow the law. You know, that's that is beyond privilege. That is beyond um, uh, discrepancy in how people are treated. That is some bullshit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tiz. Tiz. Ditto. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I'm aggravated now and I've had too much wine and so I'm just mad and so I'm going to try not to be mad. So I don't know if you saw Tom that I asked you to if you could I have it. A, I a have video it. From, don't so, be mad. So if you wouldn't mind, this is another y'all, because, you know, okay, so I want to shout out my friend, um, Angel Denise Cecile Harrison from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Woo! Mm -hmm. That was Your whole government. Names. That's right. Internet. All of so, it. Let me tell you about my friend. So Jelly, this is what we call her, she got on TikTok like a few weeks ago, and she has not stopped finding stupid things on TikTok to send me. And normally I'm just like, girl, go back to work. Why are you, why are you, why are you bothering me? Why are you doing here's that? the thing. She lives in Fort Worth now. And she sent me the video that we're about to see. And I had to write her back like, bitch, you just got power back. And this is what you did with it. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> No, that's right. Y'all right. hear Al Gore's internet's cutting up. The first thing you did was run a TikTok and find something stupid to look, send me. Look, I'm not I'm mad not at her. TikTok her. is a dangerous thing. Yes. Because I, I found this African dude and um, King something. And he decided that Vine was an art form that needed to be continued. And so he is continuing Vines on TikTok. And when I tell mm. you that half his videos have him using a filter that make him look like a roach, Oh. oh, wow. So there's a black mama and she's got two sons and she's always doing something ratchet. But half the time it's a roach or a bug or something in the videos. And he crouches down and he's like on the ceiling. I, it's, I watched 22 videos before I realized <laughs> what the hell was going on. So with that said, everybody stop your cams. And I am going to introduce you to this comedian. You can go to his TikTok and uh, his name well, I, I'm not even going to tell you his name. I'm going to let his video speak for itself. What in the wide, wide world of wave brush wizardry and magical Murray's grease is going on here today? I, I can't tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you what I ain't going to do. What I ain't going to do is participate in this foolishness. This is unheard of. The waves up top hidden, but then they turn into a little waterfall as soon as they hit the ears, don't it? Look like somebody put a king size comforter on a twin bed. You see a dude like this, he destined to be a school gentleman named Mr. Herbert. I don't even care if Herbert ain't his name. As soon as he get high, they, his name will be Bartholomew. They be like, now your name is Herbert. He be like, what's my last name? That's Herbert too. You Herbert Herbert because you stupid twice. You was idiot squared.
Here come Mr. Herbert Herbert with his spoiler kit on his head. L look at his earlobe peeking from above all that mess. Like he's scared and wants some help. And we want to help it, but it's God's will. It's God's will that he be on the head of somebody named Herbert Herbert. We don't question the word of God. When the waves tight like that, that means he don't wash his hair on the regular. Uh -uh, no, no. <coughs> his head ain't seen no water since Hush was a puppy. <coughs> <laughs> he said since Hush was a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so much more than a hundred brush strokes. <laughs> and all I could think of was, did he use gorilla glue? Mm. Cause that's what that looked like. It was a helmet. And he was right. It wasn't even the ear lobe for me. Cause I was really trying to do the I was trying to do the mental math of like, mm. I thought if you had your hair cut to wavelength, that means at the like I have my hair cut, right? It's a ball fade to wavelength. He let the length of his hair grow down almost to cover his earlobes. And the top of his ear was like, help me, help me. <laughs> I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't be in Murray's grease head. Have 100 brush strokes. It looked like he was a jag in the back. I like mean, it was a jag in the it back. It looked like overburnt ramen noodles just like dangling from his face right from so, his yeah. face so hats off to the uh, you know new comedic talent i laughed long and hard and then when he said since hush was a puppy i i ain't heard that before now i'm gonna start saying that that's gonna be my new thing and the timing of ending it on if hush was a puppy mm-hmm that oop I had to put this on Carla. <laughs> Carla knows the truth. Cause if his if his waves are laid like that, he is not. He's sleeping pretty like this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. The girls in the audience know the struggle. You know, you got prom coming up, and you don't want to mess up the hair. So you gotta sleep halfway up. <laughs> wow. Well, like nodding in the chair. Yeah, we all been there. <laughs> wow. Oh Lord. Oh my God! Well, y'all, the yeah. COVID hairdos. You right, you right, so, Alvin. Erica Goodwin was not ready either. Mm -mm. That that no, was none of us are ready. None of us are ready. I'm gonna have to let my friend know. So hats off to him for that hilarious bit, and hats yes, off to sir. my girl who needs to get get off of uh, TikTok and and get your heat back together, Miss Lady. I know that's right. Please get your heat. <laughs> Please get your heat. So there's one more thing in there. I'm gonna leave it up to you, Chuck. If you want to do it. Okay, well, hold on. I didn't know there was another y'all. Hold on. No, I'm sorry, Chuck. I meant Tom. I'm going to leave it up to Tom. Okay. I'm looking now. Another. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Oh, okay. Y yeah. This will be the final thing because this was something, it was covered on SNL and whatever. So we all know that about three or four months ago, it was a byproduct of 2020 that Aunt Jemima, you know, Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, a lot of these classic brands had been uh, coming under a lot of negative scrutiny. Yeah. Because, of course, the original Aunt Jemima was a real woman, and she was a woman who would do exhibitions and, uh, you know, world fairs and stuff, famous for her pancakes. And for many, many years, she had that, uh, the do-rag, the reverse bonnet do-rag thing. And then, like, sometime in the 90s, they decided they were going to try to uh, modernize uh, her. They were going to huxtable her. Mm -hmm. And the, so then she got like a little business suit and she got like the fly uh, natural. And um, then she wasn't so much Aunt Jemima as like oh. Maxine Jemima. Mm. Bad bitch of pancakes. And so, <laughs> <laughs> but they finally decided that uh, they needed to get rid of the whole... Uh, Aunt Jemima brand, just like Uncle Ben's rice and all that stuff. And they changed it to, I guess, the mill, the name of the mill where the flour was originally milled that went into the Aunt Jemima mix. So now it's like some old crazy ass dry Southern mill, mill pancakes. Pepperidge so Mills or something, you know, because mm -hmm. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Mm -hmm. uh, so because you all have the internets and because you have Photoshop and because you have uh, too freedom. much time on your hands. Too much time on your hands in COVID times. <laughs> so what ends up happening is this. And I'm not proud of this, 
But when I saw it, I cackled. So Aunt Jemima's <laughs> OnlyFans page is straight fire right now. And the thing that killed it for me, the thing that absolutely killed it for me is the top to the syrup bottle. That's what that's what did it. Now, I, I have to take points off because that was actually Mrs. Butterworth's who had the uh, the the actual bottle that was uh, anatomically correct. That's a Mrs. Butterworth's mm -hmm. thing. But that Aunt Jemima was setting it out on OnlyFans or, or uh, Only Pans cakes. <laughs> uh, 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 that, those are the little details that, that would have <laughs> taken that joke from quasi nasty to right into heaven. Only pans, bruh. <laughs> and she she got that sir. Yes, I'm in love with the stripper. <laughs> <laughs> she made me pancakes in the morning. <laughs> huh? And she made me pancakes in the morning. And she made me pancakes in the morning. How you gonna find someone who can work the pole and then flip and then them cakes in mm -hmm. the morning? I can bring the bacon, fry it up, fry in it a up pan. in a pan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come through, Anjali perfume. Mm -hmm. It is blasphemy to pancakes, but she she's setting out more than pancakes on oh, her only pancakes. Oh, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. That's right, Carla. That's right. We would never slander you like that, though. I wasn't ready. Could you blur out the naughty parts? I might have been able to, but don't act like y'all ain't seen that before. <laughs> y'all be on, on, on TikTok as well. Yeah, I know y'all are looking at the silhouette challenge. Put your head on my shoulder. <laughs> y'all crazy. We are a hot mess. We are a you hot know what? mess. We need, we need a chair in here for her gravitas because you see what happens when she ain't around. We just straight after dark, straight to the gutter. Straight. I live here, so this ain't nothing new for me. Anyone but that's on known that me note, yeah, say what? That's right. I would like mm -hmm. to say uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we miss you, Sharon. We want you back next week. Uh, but until we do get you back, oh, and I will say, I know that we teased that we were going to talk about Judas and the Black Messiah this week. But yeah. since Sharon was not here and all of us have a lot to say about it, uh, I wanted we wanted to move that until next week. So it's still going to be a part of Black History Month but it will be on next week's episode, which is the last episode of Black History Month, which is fitting. So we're gonna be talking about Judas and the Black Messiah. If you have not watched, I know exactly how it tastes and it's mm -hmm. delicious. If you have not mm -hmm. watched Judas and the Black Messiah, go on ahead, it's on HBO Max. It is worth it to pay for HBO Max. It's only like $15 and you'd pay that to see it in the theater and you absolutely should. So if yeah. you haven't, I put a review on my own Facebook page. I'm going to copy that review onto my Time is Talking blog, but mm -hmm. it is absolutely worth it. Daniel Kaluuya did a wonderful job. Dominique Fishbach is astounding. Yeah. And uh, there are a couple of documentaries that have been made. And so those documentaries are also well worth watching. So uh, with that, I will say I am Tom Cunningham. I am Joy Stevens. And I am Chuck Hobbs. And we are Steel. Steel, sharpens sharp steel. Steel. Let me mess that up. <laughs> A little bit. Good night, y'all. I can go to sleep now. Yeah, you know what time it is. Crack open that bottle of wine. Grab your favorite glass. Pour a couple of fingers of scotch in it. Get that stick. Light it. And blow. It's time to hang with steel, sharpened steel, after dark. <laughs> <laughs>